Happy Sunday morning. It's bright and early and I am in the studio to film a little video tutorial of my big city bonnet. And I thought I'd give you a little studio tour. I have a shared studio space, great economical way to get some studio space in London and meet lots of other cool artists. So I'll show you my little nook. On the floor, everyone kind of gets like a little cubicle um, with a desk and a locker. This is my desk, so I have bags full of yarn that I need to sort out. Um, and on my bulletin board, I like to keep up little um, magazine inspiration. So I get a lot of girly magazines kind of to inspire Material Girls and keep those around as inspiration. This is a Material Girls pattern, a crochet pattern. This is a little tapestry that I made for a workshop last summer. Just fun stuff like that. And then things that I'm grabbing are out on the desk all the time, like beads and washi tape and markers over here um this is my like filming setup so i keep um, my tripods on top of the freaking bible aesthetics of excess down here uh these mats i get a lot of questions about their kids play mats and i use them as blocking boards because they're just like cuter than most of the actual blocking boards you can get and then over here that's my fan because it gets really hot in here in the summer and a big old stack of cardboard i like to repurpose as much as i can so some of this is like packages that i've had delivered but a lot of it is grace used to work at a clothing store um and she would break down the boxes and bring them to me because they're great for things like um cardboard looms which i used to make that i'm gonna open up my locker but i wanted to show you my cute little keychain i made this at a material girls club it just says alexa and i braided some yarn my yarn shelf is probably the uh, most exciting part. I re reorganize this like once a week. It goes kind of all the way back um, to the back of the locker here, but I keep stuff for um, projects that are coming up soon right at the front and then kind of just like color schemes that I'm feeling inspired by and I feel like I'm gonna grab soon. This has nothing to do with this. I just got this at a charity shop and haven't brought it home yet. Isn't that cute? And then down here, I keep extra knitting needles, extra magazine copies. This side is much more of a mess. Um, this is my big pack of workshop materials. So it has tablecloths and decor and stuff in it. Underneath it, that is just a big pile of stuff that I've made that I don't like want to keep in my flat but want to keep because I've made it. And then up here is again some more extra magazines and this is printmaking materials which when I got the studio I meant to do more printmaking and I haven't gotten to it yet so Hopefully that happens soon. Okay, and the reason I chose this specific shared studio space is because there is a shared textile studio full of amazing equipment. Over here we have these shared sergers and Juki industrial sewing machines. So exciting, I've never gotten to work on machines like this before, so it's been something fun to learn. It's a little overcast today, but you can tell that the view of the city is absolutely insane up here. I love to work here. It is so, so special and I'm so thankful to have found this space to work in because before this, for like a good seven-ish months, if not like close to a year, um, that Chris and I were here in London. I had no idea like how I was gonna get access to this kind of stuff. I was thinking about, should I buy my own sewing machine? That's really expensive. Um, we were working at, in a studio flat, like anything I did for Material Girls or anything that I made, I had to find a space in our studio flat to do, which was just becoming like unsustainable. So this has been a really, really great deal. I love, love, love working here. <music> working on so this is a big deal okay this is the heart sweater by knitting kiki um and i've been meaning to make this since 2022 i think when i when i made my like list of things i wanted to make this year i was looking back realized i'd had the yarn for this for like two years now and i've started it like three different times but i could not get the hang of brioche stitch this guy right here and i kept watching tutorials kept like following the pattern instructions and it just did not Look right, it was not working, and so I couldn't get past the first few rows, and I had to frog it back so many times. And then I realized that it's because I knit English, and I was watching Continental tutorials, and so I was bringing the yarn to the front um, in like a weird way. I think Brewer's Stitch is so pretty, and a lot of people talk about really liking it. I always felt like dumb that I couldn't figure it out, but it was like a five minute fix. And now I am speed racing through this thing. Not really, this has taken like a week to get this far. It's just the front panel, but I feel like quite proud of myself. I think the color work with the hearts is so cute. So it's gonna keep going up with um, kind of sections of this brioche stitch, 
hearts, brioche, hearts, um, to make kind of like a fluffy, fun little sweater. So this is big, big news because I've been wanting to do this for a long time and it's finally working really well. So good for me. And then I don't have much to show you here. I'm developing a pattern for a crochet bonnet. This is going to be the next free crochet pattern of Material Girls. You guys get the inside scoop here on YouTube, kind of mimicking the top down shape of my big city bonnet, which I did a tutorial for four in the video before this, if you want to check that out. And whenever I post about it, people say they want a crochet version. Um, so I'm doing that, but it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit more textured. It's a single crochet stitch, but only through the back loop, SCBLO, because I think that just kind of like line is going to be cool. And then this will be the top and the line will go down the sides as well. These knitting podcast things are so fun because why am I updating you on this? Like you cannot tell what this is. Anyway, I am excited to have a pretty beginner friendly crochet version of this out. A lot of things in the works right now that I need to get a handle of because I'm working on personal projects and like gassed up for some personal projects. And then I also have um, a new issue of materials coming out at the end of February. So I'm finishing up the patterns for that and like going to get materials, blah, blah, blah. It means that I have like five whips right now. I'll show you a little bit more about material girls patterns later because I need to go fabric shopping in a few days. So we'll show you a bit more of what's to come there. <laughs> my favorite book cover that I have seen on a book in years. It absolutely called to me in the bookstore. It's called Bad Taste or the Politics of Ugliness by Natalie Ola. And the main point is that she talks about these concepts of good and bad taste that we have and basically makes the argument that whenever we call something in good or bad taste, we're usually hiding more insidious prejudices about people's race or class or culture. And instead of being blatantly awful, we just say, oh, well, that's in bad taste. And like, I wouldn't make that choice and we just call it like an aesthetic difference versus us being judgmental in an actually systemically harmful way so there's commentary on capitalism throughout and she kind of says like the idea of taste is flawed in and of itself because it rests so much on possessions like basically whether you have good or bad taste is just how do you spend your money is that a good enough way to spend your money to, is that a respectable way to spend your money? What possessions does it bring into your life? And how do those possessions reflect on you as a person and your values? Does it make you a good person, an interesting person, um, a person with good taste? Immediately she starts critiquing that and saying, it's really important to remember that under capitalism, none of us really have as much consumer choice as we think we do. And so these ideas of good taste get really insidious really quickly because we are judging people for consumer choices that they've made and are like largely not in control of. And so, um, she references a lot of different examples from films and books and just general pop culture figures and happenings. And it kind of wraps it all back up together after going through different chapters on fashion and food and leisure time and home, like all these different aspects of places where we would judge people's taste. Um, and she brings it all together and says, you know, after thinking about all these things, it might seem like the obvious right thing to do is to start elevating things that are considered bad taste and emulating them and you know, wearing them with pride and being like, bad taste is so cool. Um, and she's like, that's fine, I guess, but it's not really the point. The point is that capitalism makes all of us feel like we're in a scarcity mindset. It makes all of us feel like we are in competition with each other and we need to signal certain things to each other with our possessions that are supposed to say something about who we are. Really at its core, at its worst, when we say that other things are in bad taste and what we do is in good taste, what we're saying is, I am better, I would make a more refined decision and I deserve the possessions and wealth and goods that I have because I'm using them in a better way. So very interesting, insightful, challenging read. As someone who works in aesthetics, like designing and curating things that are visual, I think this is very interesting and obviously important to keep front of mind. I was always thinking about like, how do you engage with aesthetics in a way that is about having fun and being expressive and encouraging and uplifting other people and not about perpetuating harmful ideas of what is in good taste. <laughs> back from Peter Jones with a bag full of fabric. So let's see what's inside. Well, first of all, 
pair of 4.5 millimeter needles because I don't have one and I need them for a pattern that I want to start soon. Now all this kind of goes together. So check out my little color scheme. Pretty cute, right? So the next sewing pattern for Material Girls is going to be those big scrunchies that everyone's wearing. I think the original brand that made them was called Good Squish. So I got some fabric and I'm going to do in the magazine a little tutorial for a few different kinds of like ways to attach trim and i got trim a few weeks ago um so i was in the store trying to like envision the trim and fabrics that would go cute with it so i have this blue gingham and i think that this is gonna have a pink frilly trim on it orange i'm a big orange girl this year and i got where is it some binding to put on the edges of it because i really like the the look of those scrunchies when they are surged in a contrasting color but i since i used to share the studio we're not supposed to change the thread in the surges and it's only black and white so i can't do that but i was thinking about it and i was like maybe a little binding on the edges could be cute to get that kind of look this pink it's gonna have some silver lacy trim on it elastic to put inside also pink like too bad you won't see it but it's cute so that is my next little sewing project i also wanted to show you my first love crafts order, which it's amazing that I've been in the UK for a year and not ordered from them before. But the next pattern that I want to make, which I got those needles for, is the Prima Pullover by Starcross Knits. I will insert a picture of it, but it's this cute off the shoulder top. And I have been think, you know, vying the yarn for so long, but I could not decide what color to do. I decided to go with black which is um the original one that she made and i was like should i try something like brighter colored but i was thinking i have the pattern if i want to do that eventually i can right now i'm just thinking like a staple off the shoulder something that can look nice dress it up dress it down and i think that black is the right thing for that so i got a bunch of barocco vintage which i had never heard of this yarn before um but it's the recommended yarn in the pattern and i was able to find it on love craft so i have a bunch of skeins of that and feeling it this actually does feel like really nice 52 percent acrylic 40 percent wool eight percent nylon um so i got this one that it's recommended because of the nylon in it and the pattern talks about like the ribbing makes things nice and stretchy but i wanted to make sure that the yarn had some stretch since it's like around the shoulders i'm quite happy with this i think that'll be nice and soft to wear lastly to show you i finished the crochet bonnet that a few clips ago i was trying to explain to you and basically just showing you the top so i showed you this much and this is what the rest of it looks like it actually turned out way cuter than i thought like i thought it was just gonna look like a pretty basic um crochet bonnet but i put it on and i was like wait i think i actually kind of like did something sweet right i think it's so sweet i love the way that the shape came out and i'm really happy that instead of just a basic crochet crochet st crochet stitch i did the back loop only because it gives that nice like line down the side which i think that texture just makes it looks look much more like structural and nice and professional um and it's the same method here just going the opposite direction for the kind of method around the face i knit before i crocheted and so something that i think I kind of struggle with when I design crochet stuff is that I'm always kind of thinking of it in terms of knitting and so one thing I don't like about crochet is that there's not a perfect um match for ribbing which is so foundational important in most knit garments but I think this was a nice little way to like mimic that a bit around the face and create that structure so might see more of that for me because I'm really happy with how it turned out ah! just like my big city bonnet pattern this is made with yarn held double so you can see you know multiple colors kind of in there i like the way that, that looks with the stitch you get to do fun like color stuff with it or just hold two strands together of the same color if you'd rather do that but this will be a free pattern in the next issue of material girls the free pattern free pattern will be on the website and knock on wood let's all hope that i'm able to um get this done but i want to start doing free video tutorials of the material girls patterns as well because most of them are pretty simple like i um on purpose make them to be things that hopefully you can make in just like an afternoon because i think it's fun to have projects like that that are a little less like intimidating than a whole sweater or something but still let you feel like proud of something that you've made and end up with a cute accessory um so most of them are pretty simple i put the patterns out for free anyway i thought might as well do it in video form because i know that's really helpful to a lot of people to be able to see so i think this would make a good video tutorial and that will be out eventually hopefully at the same time as the magazine i will keep you um i'll keep you updated on that with that all being said it is the end of january and february and february is a big month the past couple of years all my februarys have just been 
packed and with exciting things. So I'm, I'm excited about it, but um, coming up with Material Girls, obviously the monthly Material Girls Club, but Material Girls turns one at the end of February. So I'm doing an event at a wine bar in London. It already sold out. Actually, both of those events, um, the Material Girls Club and the wine bar sold out like three plus weeks before um, the event actually is. So that's really excited that I was really proud of that. That's like the first month that that's happened, that there's been such demand and there's like wait lists. So I'm really excited that um yeah people like want to be coming to those things because i love putting them on two material girls events a new issue coming out in february i have some big projects in my day job happening my cousin's coming to visit it's grace and i's anniversary it's my birthday it's valentine's day we're coming up on a, a busy month but i'm excited for it and now subscribe down below if you want to see more of what i'm making and doing and reading and follow me on instagram you can follow material girls on instagram which is actually the fun place to be with daily memes coming out and head to materialgirls.com for some free patterns and issues of the magazine. Have a good day.